Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The introit this morning is You Deserve the Glory and Honor. You deserve the glory.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our guide, our guardian, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise this morning. Grant us grace, Father God, to worship you in spirit and in truth for such a time as this, to the comfort of our souls, Lord God. Gracious God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will dwell with us and bless us during this time of worship. We pray that we will learn to trust you for such a time as this, from day to day in all that we say and do without fear. We thank you for being our God. Special blessings, Lord God, on all that will be said and done in this service. May it be done to the glory of thy holy name. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Let us repeat the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we'll have the children at worship with Reverend Fairway. Amen? Amen. Good morning, children, wherever you are. This morning, I hope you are listening in. And last week, we talked about a little girl, and the weeks before, we are little boys and um, big men. This morning, we are going back to boys. At least, we are going to children. The song says, I need you to survive. I need you. You need me. We are all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We are all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. So he went to Eli. 
and said, you called me because I heard the voice three times. And Eli said, no. But when you hear the voice again, say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. And he went back to sleep, and he heard the voice, and he said, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. So Samuel was a servant for God in those days. And you children right now, you are servants for God. You are supposed to speak to your parents and your children, your, 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 um, your fellow classmates, and all those you meet and let them know about the Almighty God. That's your job. So God used Samuel as a witness for him. He used David as a witness. He used Daniel as a witness. So God is calling on you this morning to be a witness. Amen. We need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 
Thank you, Reverend Fairweather, for our worship with the children, and thank you, Mr. Gomes, for your music ministry. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, this part of the worship is time for our response to God's generosity with our tithes and offerings to continue to cover the expenses of the church. Um, what do they say? God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Yeah. Amen. 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 Gracious God, we thank you for these tithes and these offerings. Lord God, we pray that it will be used to further the work of your here, further your work here at Westchester and beyond. Lord God, all this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 This morning, our hymn of preparation, create in me a clean heart and purify me. Purify me. Create in me a clean heart so that I may worship you. Cast me not away from your presence. Please don't take your spirit from me and restore the joy of salvation so that I may worship you. Amen. Create in me a clean heart.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The title of the message today is Taking a Stand for God. Taking a Stand for God. I want to lift up a few of these verses in your hearing from Matthew chapter 11, 16 through 19 and 25 to 30 as we begin to focus our hearts to receive this message. Verse 28 of chapter 11. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, it is easy and my burden is light. Taking a stand for God. Let us pray, for, pray to God. Lord God, speak to us in the quietness of this time while we wait on you. Speak, Lord, by touch of tongue and by touch of life. And so let your word be spoken. Let your word, O oh God, be heard, and then let your word be lived. And so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Taking a stand for God. A disciple, we know, is a follower of Jesus. Put another way, a disciple is a Christian. One who believes that God has revealed God's self in Jesus Christ. One who accepts Jesus Christ as his or her savior. One who in turn adheres to the teachings of Jesus completely and daily lives out the implications of that belief, that relationship with Jesus. Therefore, it should follow naturally that a disciple is one who follows the way of Jesus one who seeks to imitate the life of Jesus, one who demonstrates daily in his or her life that commitment to Jesus, that relationship to Jesus, the message of Jesus. Jesus was always on the side of those who were disenfranchised. Jesus always showed up on the side of those who are oppressed, those who are marginalized, those who felt as if no one cared, those who felt weak or without power or influence, those who might regard themselves in relation to others as insignificant, Jesus always sided with them. So you find him commanding that the lepers be clean. You find him speaking to the woman caught in adultery. Go and sin no more. You will remember that the man who was possessed with demons was sent on his way. Jesus is always on the side of those who need his help, who needed empowerment. He was always on the side of those who were without power. Our text amply 
demonstrates what that means. It tells us that in the marketplace, you had the children trying to get the attention of each other. So one tried in the first place to create the kind of music that would get the attention and satisfaction of a group and they didn't want that. And then you had those who had lost loved ones and so they wailed and they mourned and that didn't seem to be enough. And we come out of a time when normally we would be told that the customer is the most important person. In this case, what Jesus was saying is in the marketplace where transactions seem to be the norm, not even transactions seem to work. When you are transacting, you play both sides. You try to please different groups of persons. Jesus, on the other hand, using John and using himself as points of reference, would talk about persons who are about the business of God. And he speaks to the fact that John, even though he came socializing so that he can reach persons, but he never really caroused with people. He wasn't eating, he wasn't drinking, yet they said he was a demon. And in Jesus' case, he came and he socialized. He came eating, he came drinking, he came sitting with persons where they were. And then the same group of persons will look at him and say that he was a glutton. He was a drunkard, he was a friend of tax collectors and sinners. When you take a stand for God, you're going to be called names. People are going to label you. But Jesus was adamant that it was important for him as it was for John to take a stand for God. And even though that might attract different name callings, you were still required to take a stand. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, in our time, in, in these days, days of protests, days of unrest, if you like, days when persons are actively engaging in the struggle for equal rights and justice. Christians, if we are that, are called upon to take a stand like Jesus. Since we are called to follow Jesus, since we are called to live out the life of Jesus in our world. And so I want to pause long enough to let you know that there are at least four things that are involved in taking a stand for God. And each one of us needs to be mindful of them. And I want to use, as I've been using in the last couple of uh, sermons, a word that I want you to remember these particular four involvements, if you like. And I want you to hold in your mind the word call. Call, C-A-L-L. I want you to hold that in your mind because I don't want you to forget that if you are a Christian, then you must be living as Jesus lived. You must be living out the imperative of the gospel, the teachings of Jesus. So the C in the word call tells us that it involves a calling. If you are going to take a stand, for God, understand that you only can take a stand if you heard the calling of Jesus. 
Notice what Jesus says in our text. Come unto me all you who labor and are heavy laden. Come unto me those who are burdened. Come unto me those who are weighed down by the cares and the concerns of the world and persons in the world, the weak, the marginalized, the oppressed, those who are without justice, those who are without mercy, those who are treated as if they have little or no value. It's a calling. It's not something that you can just take up and say, I'm going to do this or else. It will be just out of convenience that you do what you do. A calling arises out of a commitment to the one who calls. A calling arises out of a relationship with the one who does the calling. And Jesus, who asked first those disciples to follow him, asks us today as Christians to follow him too. And to follow him involves hearing the call of God on our lives. God is constantly calling us away from a place of comfort. He's constantly calling us away from a place where we feel safe. He's constantly calling us away from the place where we serve out of convenience. Calling us to a higher ground. So the C in call is about calling. You need to be alert, you need to be open, you need to be aware of the calling that God has placed on your life and it's strange because that calling is always to follow Jesus, always to do what Jesus would do in those settings. In fact, in these times, the question ought to be, which side would Jesus be on? Would Jesus be on the side of those who are oppressing, those who are disenfranchising, those who belittle, those who marginalize others, those who rob others of their justice, on which side would Jesus be? Mm -hmm. The scriptures demonstrate that Jesus would be on the side of those who are protesting for their rights mm -hmm. to be equal, treated equal. Mm -hmm. So that's the C, it stands for calling. And then we come to the A in call. And it involves alignment. Jesus didn't just simply say, Come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He also required and points out in our text that it involves alignment. Alignment with God. This is how he puts it. Take my yoke upon you. Put another way. Allow my concerns to weigh you down. Not just the cares for your personal life. That's why he said, come unto me all you who labor and I am laden. Come. Take upon you my yoke. Take upon me, upon you the cares that I have the things that I hold close to me, the things that are dear to me, the things that concern me. Take on the responsibility that he was saying to his disciples, to the world. Take on responsibilities as they flow from the relationship with me. It's not enough to just utter or give lip service. It involves alignment of the individual with all their resources, putting those at the disposal of God. So if you have a voice, it's your voice that should be lifted up. If you have other resources, money or position, then that is required of you and that should be aligned with God and God's intention, God's plan. You see, it's not enough to hear the calling. 
You must align your life with the Jesus plan, the Jesus movement. And Jesus is always involved in the movement for justice, the movement for equality. Jesus was about leveling not just the playing field. That's why he says that he came to level out the rough places. To bring down those mountains that are in the way. Yeah. He comes trusting that you and I will hear the call and come aligning ourselves with his plan, with his will, with his intention, with his work for justice and equality. So not only is, do we have the C for calling, for call, which means calling, you must hear the call. Not only must you align yourself with God, but notice the next thing Jesus says in the text is that not only must you take upon yourselves the yoke, but he says, learn from me. Learn from me. In other words, then, as you see me live out my life in scriptures, so you must live out your life. In other words, then, there is a learning curve. The more we give ourselves to studying what Jesus' life was about, the closer we get to living as fully as possible this life of Jesus. And it is the path of the disciple, you know. The path of the disciple is a learning path. Day by day you learn more and more as it requires of you as per what it is that Jesus wants of you. Learn from me, he says. You know, it's interesting in the way in which he puts it in our text, you know. He says, learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So part of what he was saying is that if you want to really find me, you will find me among the meek. You will find me among the humbled. You will find me in the place where rest exists. It's interesting in our text because often enough when we talk about the soul, you know, we think it's something, someplace out there. But the Greek word used for soul is suke or psyche, from which psychology or psychiatry comes. So in a sense, what Jesus was saying is that your inner being your inner being must be placed where the meek is, must be placed where the humbled is. And understand why I use the past tense, no? The one who is humbled, not necessarily the humble. Because persons' spirits get broken when people treat them as if they're insignificant. People's spirits get dashed. Their hopes get dashed. They experience an inner turmoil. They are humbled. They are brought to a place where they feel powerless or weak. Jesus is saying, learn from me. If you really learn from me, you will see where I'm located. I am with those who have been marginalized. I am with those who have been humbled, who have been broken by life's injustices. It's there you will find rest. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Here he tells you that if you learn from him, you'll find rest for your souls. So not only is he, is, does this involve a calling, not only does it involve a calling and an alignment, 
Not only does it involve a calling, an alignment, and a learning curve, but it also involves leveraging. It's so interesting to look at how Jesus plays this out in our text. He says, at the end of it all, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, I had opportunity to go look at what the Greek word for light means. And it means insignificant. We usually would say easy, no? Or not heavy. But look at what Jesus is saying. Use your insignificance as a leverage. As a leverage to turn around the situation of others. So if we all individually understand that by ourselves we are insignificant and we come together as one, then our insignificance has significant leveraging power. So yes, consider yourself as insignificant because you are. It is God who empowers, it's God who accomplishes the task. And so if that's the case, then you and I in our insignificance must now turn to the God who is significant and who will make something significant out of us. So it's a calling, my brothers and sisters. It requires an, al an alignment and you will be on a learning curve. But then who you are in relation to Jesus and in relation to your brothers and sisters, that will become your leveraging point. God is looking for persons who are willing to take a stand with Jesus. Understanding that a stand with Jesus is a stand with your brothers and sisters who are on the margins of life, who are oppressed, who are treated as if they have no significance. God is looking for persons who are willing to take a stand, and that stand is sacrificial. It calls us from a place of comfort to a place of risking. It calls us from a place of individuality to a place of realignment. It calls us to learn from Jesus what it means to be fully at God's disposal and then in turn to use our insignificance to accomplish the significant. One by one, we're able to change the world. Or as they would say, one, one, cocoa, fill basket. Put another way, one added to one makes more than one's individual self. And with God, nothing is impossible. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to God. Lord God, you continually call us away from ourselves toward you and toward the plan you have for us. Lord, you know what we are going through and you know what our brothers and sisters are going through. And because you know, O oh God, you are a God who have always responded to the needs of your people. In these times, O oh God, we need justice. And we know that already you have sent your Spirit your Holy Spirit to empower us so that we can be your hands and legs in the world and your voice in the world. Give us courage, O oh God, so that we will not relent, but we will fight and stay in the fight until justice is realized. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and suffering that you will leverage your power to heal and to restore in their favor. 
those who are sick and those who will be having surgeries, oh God, we ask you to come alongside them. Those who are still suffering the onslaught of the COVID virus, we ask you, oh God, to come alongside them and restore their spirits even as you restore their souls and their bodies. And whatever the circumstance might be, oh God, that we are going through, we ask you to come alongside us and be the answer to every question and the solution to every problem. We know that with you nothing is impossible. And so we cast our cares upon you who care for us. We cast ourselves upon you, O God, because you are able to do far more than we could ask or think. And so, O God, we lift up this prayer to you, trusting not only that you hear us, but rather that you are attending unto the prayers of your people. It's into your hands, O God, that we commend all things. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to the communion segment of this worship service. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, 
delight in him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as the holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on the gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I invite you now to take the elements of bread and wine and feed on them in your hearts by faith as we receive this sacrament. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ given for us. We take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for us and we are thankful. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ it was shed for us. We drink this in remembrance that his blood was shed for us and we are thankful. Returning to that place in our worship service where we pay attention to opportunities for ministry. And just want to draw your attention to a few of these. Um, again, I remind you of the Bible studies that persist on Monday night, 7 to 9. Wednesdays, 12 to 1, Saturdays, 4 to 
You can access these Bible studies by way of conference call and the numbers you know, 712-770-9, let me come at that again, 712-770-4673, and the code is 961 974. <laughs> Maybe. But you know those numbers, um, so I encourage you to continue. Those who are calling, you know the number. Um, yes? Um, I'd just like to um, invite those who have not been um, to the Friday evening Sister to Sister Bible study when we resume in the fall. Um, we have a new study that we're going to be doing and it's called Your Gifts. Discover God's unique design for you. And believe me, each one of us has at least one gift. Okay, so don't say you don't have any gifts. Everybody has at least one. We're gonna use this text, Your Gift, Discover God's unique design for you. It's available on Amazon.com. So please, um, please join us on Friday night this fall. The specific date will be announced. Sure. Thank you. And you say sister to sister, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sister to sister, you bear that in mind. Um, so sisters gather together to do Bible study. The Bible study on the Saturday is, I guess, brother to brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, just some quick um, pieces of information as well. Um, this week, um, tomorrow, if my memory serves me right, Sister Teresa Samuel will be having knee surgery, and we need to remember her in prayers. And then also, we we'll continue to remember Brother uh, Minister Alwyn Benjamin, who is recuperating at home from surgery. We also remember Sister Marjorie, who is uh, recuperating at home. That's Sister Wright's sister. Uh, she's up in Rochester, so we continue to lift her up in prayers. Um, we remember, though, that the family of Sister Phyllis Smalls, um, the Shaws, we remember, the Olivers as well. Um, they have lost um, Sister Phyllis to death. And so, as a church, you know, we usually rally around those who have lost loved ones, and I encourage you to do the same for Sister Phyllis's family, Sister Phyllis Smalls. Last week, I mentioned that it was 51 years that Brother Obam and his wife were celebrating anniversary. Just so that you know, this last week, we had two other members who were up there. Um, Sister Vicky, Vicky Jacobs, completed 45 years of marriage. And then also the Wrights, Sister Juliet Wright and, Sister, and Brother Francis, celebrated their 52nd anniversary. So we continue to lift them up in prayer as they celebrate. Uh, marriage is for life. Amen. And so we trust that the life they live will continue to be a testimony to the goodness of God. Also want to um, let you know next week, Friday, next Sunday, um, at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, there will be a Zoom-based service. And that Zoom-based service will be a time to remember Remember persons who have been adversely impacted by the COVID virus, and then also those who have recovered from COVID will be celebrating with them. So the Bronx Cluster, the Bronx Cooperative Parish, will be hosting this service, and it will be on Zoom. So what we'll do is to put the information on the website, 
a link so that you can click on that and get to the um, Zoom um, service as well as next Sunday I will announce to you what that Zoom um, password and ID number will be. But we are hoping that all of us will tune in. Uh, Westchester will be very present in that service, so I hope that our members will also team, team up with us. We continue to gather names and um, listings as per the two services we are planning on having um, in the fall when we reopen. Um, the 9 a.m. service, Sister Letsom is gathering those names. Her number is 718-208-9028. That's 718-208-9028, Sister Letsom, for the 9 a.m. service. And for the 1115 service, Sister Wright, Sister Juliet Wright, her number is 718-502-7776. 718 5027776. Um, persons have continually asked about um, making donations to word supplies, cleaning supplies. You can do that. You could send um, your contributions directly to the church's address or go to the church's um, website, westchestermethodist.com and make a donation there specifically for supplies or you can drop it off at the church, the mail slot, and we will appropriate those funds accordingly. Um, we'll try our hardest to see that everything is in place as we continue to prepare ourselves for reopening. Um, one other thing I need to mention and again, this is when all of us would be called upon to participate in cleaning up between services um, so that we are clean and COVID free so that we can have a, not just comfortable, but a safe and healthy worship service. So we will be calling upon you to participate in that. That said, I'm gonna um, at this point make sure I thank everybody who participated in this worship service. Thank you Reverend Fairweather for the children's message. As you notice, she was not as prominently present as she usually would be. She decided to leave home with her glasses. Um, so she, she has no glasses, so she did the children's message want to thank Brother Roy Gums for the Ministry of Music by way of Steel Pan. Thank you, sir. I want to thank Deaconess, Minister Linda Douglas-Smith for leading this worship service. You see how God prepares the way? Yes, he does. Uh, you didn't know coming here this morning that you were going to lead him. No. But coming you did. So thank you. And I want to also thank Sister Laureen Dick for reading the scripture lesson. Brother Saunders, who is always with us. You know, Jesus said it, you know, the poor you always are with you. Brother Saunders, you always are with you. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank you, Brother Saunders, for availing yourself to this worship service and for, as a trustee and as an usher. Want to also thank Brother Taj for um, manning the the, the um, iPad so that we can have live streaming and later he will mount this on YouTube and WhatsApp. want to thank my goodly sister, Sister Dockery, who came and sat all the way in the back by herself. But we are thankful to have her here. And we thank God for the ways in which God has been operating in your favor want to thank all those who have been making contributions, keeping up with their tithes and offering, as we continue to seek to do the work of God through Westchester United Methodist Church. This said, I invite you now to participate with me in the closing out of this worship service.
Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. 717. 717. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord he is trampling up the vintage where the grains of rods are stored. He has loosed the joyful lightning of the terrible sword. He is So may God the Father who loves and takes care of you, God the Son who redeemed you by his life, death, and resurrection, God the Holy Spirit who continues to give life to you and to me, may God be with us today and every moment of our lives. Amen. 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 Have a blessed day, everybody.